Hello everybody, this is Rob Moffitt. Guys, one of my favorite channels on YouTube is uh, Scotty Kilner, or Kilmer. He's got a, a great channel on car repair. He's a mechanic. He's been a mechanic for, I think, over 40 years. And he freely gives his advice and stories about fixing cars. If you want to check him out, I'll give a link to his channel. But the other day he posted a video on fixing flats. And uh, I thought it'd be fun to watch because I figured after 40 years he should have some good stories. And... And unfortunately, it was pretty straightforward, uh, your basic how to fix a flat video, and I was a little disappointed. I thought he would have had some interesting stories about some uh, flats he came across. Because it seems like <laughs> my whole life has been uh, trouble with flats that you don't come across in normal situations. And I was hoping somebody else had similar stories. It wasn't just me. Um, I don't know. I, I think I grew up with problem flat tires. When I grew up, we were really poor, and uh, my stepfather, he uh, he had trouble with the law and his license. <laughs> After all, he wasn't allowed to drive. Well, he, he was allowed to drive. He just wasn't allowed to have anybody catch him. He, uh, <laughs> he, he, uh, he would work on the cars, and then he would fix them and break them and have me take them to the mechanic or something, and it was always interesting having me go. But when I was a little kid, I remember like I was 12 years old, he would be out there working on the cars and fixing flat tires, and back then we couldn't afford good tires we would buy something called retreads i don't even know if they have them anymore but he would always tell me the retreads were good because that's what greyhound buses use they use retreads on their truck tires and so on their bus tires so we would buy retreads and uh, when they would get flat have to take them somewhere and the mechanics would come out and laugh at me and hey fred come here look at this <laughs> they hadn't seen one of these since i don't lord knows i don't know when but uh i'd have to stand on the pipe he'd have to put on the the t-bar to get the nuts off because they'd usually be on with the air hammer so hard you couldn't get them off it was always exciting with the bumper jack and the dogs running around and things propped up with blocks of wood and it was always drama so i kind of grew up with interesting tire situations uh the first one on my own i guess was when i was a young man i was out somewhere with some people and uh probably shouldn't have been with them we shouldn't have probably been where we we're at now we we're some jungle area, and it was raining, and we were out in the boonies, and uh, well, it was four of us, and one of us was like, this guy hardly anybody knew, he was like a Vietnam vet, he would, he was kind of known for his irritability and his mood swings when he was drinking and stuff, he'd sometimes get crazy, and uh, he wanted to stay away from him when he did, and uh, he had been drinking, we got a flat, and now we're trying to fix it, and pretty straightforward, we take the nuts off, but the last nut won't come off. And we're guys. We, we know how to fix a tire. And the more we try, the harder we try it. It does not coming off. We're getting wet. It's getting cold. And it's getting dark. And we shouldn't be there. And it's like, it's just not going well. And uh, we've been messed with this about an hour. And people are, are getting short-tempered. And uh, it's just a tire as a nut. I mean, come on. How hard can it be? And I'm really worried that we're going to break the, the, the bolt off. And uh, finally, the, the guy, the old guy from the Vietnam vet, he starts screaming and yelling, and we all think he's losing his mind. He's going to get ready and do something. And then he's pointing at the, the nut and the stud, and he look at this, look at this. And we've we, we been looking at it. <laughs> we've we, we been looking at it, you know. But he had seen there was a letter L on, on the, the, nut, the, the thread uh, on the bolt. It was left-hand thread. For some reason, one of the nuts... On, or the, the bolts on the tire was left-hand thread. You turn it the opposite way. The others were normal, but the one of them wasn't, and we couldn't get it off. So he, he uh, saw that and was able to uh, get it off. And if we hadn't seen that, I don't know what we were going to do. It was getting to be a sticky situation. So if you ever have a tire won't come off, take a look at the threads or the, 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 the bolts. Make sure that's not a left-hand thread you got there. I think it was an old, it was either old Willis or maybe it was a British car. Maybe it was a British kind of a, uh, I don't think it was, could have been a, gosh, I don't remember what it was. But it wasn't a common car. It was like a, a kind of like a Willis Jeep, long time ago. Next situation, I remember um, <clears throat> at a VW van, and uh, I was always working on it. Had a flat, it was going flat, kept le leaking air, and I was always going to fix it, but I uh, never got around to it. And it started leaking really bad. So I had a gas station across the street. This was 27th Avenue, Miami, next to the Miami River. It was two blocks south from the, the bridge. And everybody in there spoke Spanish, and I didn't speak hardly any Spanish. But I had a tire was going flat. It was pretty easy to communicate. And uh, they come out there with the air hammer and go and try to get the nuts off, and they don't come off. 
And uh, after about two minutes, they gave up going back inside and leave me there. And I'm thinking, what in the heck am I going to do? I mean, do I take it to a laundromat? Do I take it to Winn-Dixie? I mean, <laughs> I'm at a, gr a garage. And uh, they just gave up on me. I can understand why. They're only going to get paid like 5 or $10 to fix something that they're going to have to spend a lot of time on because they can't get the nut off. But one of the customers who couldn't speak any uh, English either, he came over and we'd use sign language. And he went in and uh, what he did is he borrowed one of their sledgehammers. And he came out and he whacked on a nut. Then he took their air jack, air hammer, and, and uh, got that nut off. Ever since then, I would try to make sure I got a, a little sledge hammer, a nice something solid in my, my trunk. I can bang on my, my, uh, my the, the lugs, nuts on, on my wheels. So that was my really first bad flat tire. Um, the next one, I remember I was on Sunrise Boulevard. This wasn't that long ago. And I blew a, blew a, a tire, got a flat. And uh, I was probably the last person in America that didn't have a, a cell phone. And you're not going to believe this. Across the street from where I had gotten the flat was a, uh, a, was a phone booth. Probably only two left in Broward County. I went over there, called AAA, they came out. And when the guy came, I had it on the jack. We just lifted up just a little bit, and we were at a construction site. He went over, found some wood. This was nighttime. He crawled on the car and started banging on it. And uh, I'm embarrassed. I didn't think about that. But um, it, I had tried really hard, and I, I wobbled it. I hit it from, from the one side, but not from the back. He got behind it, hit on the back, came off. So that's my second lesson I learned. Um, another problem I remember having was, uh, I had a tire that was perfect treads. The tire was in perfect condition. All my tires were in perfect condition. And, uh, the darn tire, I was getting on the expressway. And just as I was starting to merge with traffic, it blows out on me. And I pull over where there's really no no edge of the road, there's no shoulder, and the carbs are whizzing by, and carbs are coming fast behind me trying to merge, and I start fixing that tire. It was terrible. And I get it fixed, and I, next day I take it to uh, Goodyear, and they told me, well, they can't give me any money for the tire. There's no, uh, no guarantee, even though there's good threads on it, because the, the year was over five years old, and the tire's only good for five years. I had no idea I should be looking at the numbers on the tire to see how old they are. I was always going by the threads. So that was my next flat tire ad adventure. So if you ever have trouble with your cars, with your tires, you want to carry something heavy with you, and you want to check your, your dates on your tires to make sure they're not out of date, they're not more than five years old. So uh, the most interesting flat tire repair job I ever saw was I was in a restaurant and a guy had broke down across the street, and you could tell he was drunk. <laughs> and he started fixing his car. And he took the nuts off. He jacked up the tire, okay. And he took the tire off. And he put the spare in his trunk. <laughs> and then, with the car still on the jack, he got in the car and drove away. <laughs> well, he drove away a little bit. <laughs> uh, Scotty Kellner, he he was uh he's got a good channel and I like his videos, and uh, his flat tire video was informative. But I kind of was hoping for a little bit more. <laughs> I thought he'd seen more stories and than uh, he let on. So guys, if you um, ever have trouble with flat tires, you might want to uh, let me know what experiences you've had, what adventures you've had with your flat tires. And uh, watch out for those left-hand threads. <laughs>